guys, it's Robin, our Silent Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you whatever projects I've worked on in the craft room this week, whether I worked on it for just a little bit of time or I actually finished the project. No finishes at all this week, but I'm close. I managed to get Hubby's Comfort Quilt. It is actually quilted. I have all the giant fabric on the back, as I mentioned I would do. This is just a cotton fabric. This way, if he wants, like I said, if he wants to just show the back and be all giants everywhere that day, or if he wants to have a little bit of the giants floating in the blue sky, he'll be all set. I just did free motion quilting with some red thread. I tend to use the essentials thread from connecting threads. That's a lot of thread talk. And it's just a standard red. I don't know what it's actually called, but it's, it's red. And it goes really well with the red that's in their helmets and the red that goes around the giants. I have the binding strips all cut. If you watch my Talk To Me Tuesday video, you already saw this, but I filmed both my Talk To Me Tuesday video and my Whip It Wednesday video on Monday mornings. So by the time Wednesday does come around, this quilt will be done. I will be putting the binding on either this afternoon or Tuesday morning. I just have this fun little white binding. It has has this little don't tell hubby but it's flowers texture along here that just once you fold it all up it's not gonna matter you know you get this on the quilt and you don't even you just see that there's something there you don't even know what it is so it'll be perfectly fine so I have all this to get this process today and get it ready to go on the quilt I'm going to stitch it down with my sewing machine I will be stitching it to the back Holding it to the front and then just doing some type of a stitch to hold it on totally machine sewn that's hard to say so that when it goes through the wash if it has to be washed every few days then it'll be okay because sometimes when you're in a hospital setting or you're getting chemo there could be type of fluids on it or blood or you might spill your orange juice or something so I needed something that can be washed really well go in and out of the washer and not have to worry about it I did have some questions on what this ended up measuring. Let's see. So this ended up being about 39 inches wide and about 47 inches long. I did not plan, as you know, I had issues with it. I made it too long, not na too narrow. I had to take things apart, add squares, take off squares. So it didn't really matter. I wasn't going for a set size. I think if I was to make it for someone else that I maybe I would check into uh, wheelchair sizes, but they tend to be a little narrow. Um, I think if you take if you take a lap quilt, which is usually about 40 by 50 or 40 by 60, I think the 40 is pretty good, but maybe cut back on the length a little. It all depends on who you're making for, how they're going to use it, and how tall they are, right? So Hubby's just a little over six foot. He needs a little bit extra, but when you're sitting in a chair, I always find threads. You want to be able to maybe just cover your lap. You don't need to have it very big. You could look up for maybe nursing home size blankets and quilts. But if you're making it for someone, whatever size you make it, you know they're going to love it. And here's how much of the Giants fabric I still have left. I have, uh, it's, it's got to be like a yard. And I even have a little chunk that came off the side. So there's still things I could do. Maybe I'll be nice and make a pillow if I have enough. Maybe. We'll see. A pillowcase. We'll see. I also did another disappearing nine patch. So this is the one way to do a disappearing nine patch to where I kept, I kept the block straight and I just flipped a couple of the corners. And then I also took the leftovers of a baby fabric that I had when I did the bibs and the burp cloths. And then this time I just cut my nine patch into fours and I just mixed it all back up and then I stitched it all back together. So this is each little section right here. You can see this right here, because here's from the center block, and this is from the two sides, and then this is one of the corners. So this is one of the four pieces that I cut when I cut my nine patch, and then here's another four. And I just rotated them and flip-flopped them so that I didn't have any of the seams within each row that I had to worry matching up. Now when I put my rows together, I did have to match them this way. But with as mixed up as you have the blocks here, if you're off just the slightest of an eighth of an inch or something, it's not really going to be noticeable. Like for instance, see how that seam is not exactly perfect. 
Once I go ahead and I free motion quilt all over this and get it all nice and crinkly in the wash with some cotton batting, that little bit is not going to be a problem. But you have to decide for yourself how much you can handle. If you can handle that one little bit here being off or if that's really going to bother you. Use extra pins in your seams and go really slow. And then if you have a problem, you can always pull out your seam ripper, seam rip back to here, and then restitch this section and everything will be fine. Because I was good here, I'm a little off there, and when I got back over to here, I'm good. So it's just this one little seam. And I might have another couple here or there, but I'm not going to look for them and I'm not going to point them out because for me, I think this is going to be perfectly fine. It's not going to be a problem. This is going to be well loved. My next step will be to work on the backing. Now I have this bits of chunks of fabric left over to form my backing. And I might even have enough for the binding because I say that is I have all these blocks still. I did not use all of these blocks that I can incorporate into the back or I can just go ahead and make a small doll quilt with these. Now since I have so many of these little ones from left over from the nine patch, I'll probably go ahead and do that. But I do have these little bits left too, these squares. So I have eight of these squares. I have 17 of these little blocks here. So I know that there is, there's a pattern that I've made before for a baby quilt where you use, you put these four, four of these back into a little block and then you put very, very wide sashing and borders. So it kind of floats in the quilt. So I think I might save these to make another baby quilt like that and then just go ahead and incorporate these into a strip in the back. So that'll be fun for that. And then I have enough for, like I said, another project. The binding, I kind of really think maybe oh, a pale green would be nice. I could pull that out of here. I could use a light purple, the pink, the grays. These polka dots have the turquoise, the aqua in there. I can, There's a lot of colors in here that I can pull out and use for my binding, or I can just go with a straight light gray or even a white and it'll be perfectly fine. So I haven't thought as far as binding yet because I still have to build the backing and then I'll worry about that. A lot of times I know ahead of time and I can make the binding right from the start, but this time I first need to see what's left over from here and then I can go ahead and incorporate it into the binding. Because once again, when I built this quilt, I had no idea what size I was going to. I just wanted to go ahead and see what I could get out of the fabric I have. That's it with the quilting stuff now. We're gonna move on to knitting. I did work some on this shawl, my gray and pink shawl. It is still gray. I haven't incorporated the pink yet. Now I'm getting closer right now. I have to knit 64 rows and I've only had knit eight. So it's gonna take me a little bit to get to the lace work. But here I was last time and now I'm up to here. And as you can see, this is rippling. What this pattern does, this is the beach bum. You can find a link for it in my Ravelry page is you do some things you do some things but a lot of times you're you're practically doubling your row so if you had 50 stitches then you have a hundred then you have 200 then you have 400 so you know you're, you're doing this incrementally so the more I go the longer it's taken me to get through a row now because I have this many stitches on my needles but it's still fun because it is still mainly just knit, 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 knit. You're doing the garter stitch. It makes a nice, fluffy, squishy shawl. The The yarn that I'm using is the, the Karen Simply Soft, and it really is. It's very Simply Soft. It is an acrylic, but this will be able to withstand a lot of wear. It can go through the wash. The person that I'm giving it to does not have to block it or anything. And as you can see, this, pa this pattern really does open up. I will probably do a little steam blocking with this just to open up the little bit of lace that's here. And then when I get to the end, I'm sure I'm going to want to open up that lace a little. But this is really nice and squishy. It's got a lot of stretch to it, so this is going to be a wonderful shawl when it's done. And just as a quick little peek at the pink that is going to be coming up soon, I cannot wait to get to the last 64 rows so that I can get ahead and get started on the pink. I might be playing a little yarn chicken. I might have to pick up another skein of this. I hope I don't because I know I won't need to go into it for very much. I might just end up, if it's getting a little close, since I'm using a, I don't remember if this pattern called for a worsted weight or a sock weight, but it's already going to be large enough. I might be able to just stop a couple inches ahead of time so I don't have to purchase another skein. 
And I can always make the portion where the pink comes into it just a little bit longer. I'll figure that out when I get to that point. It's in this lovely little bag. It kind of feels strange not to have any socks on the needles yet, but I haven't ordered any yarn for Robbie, and I just don't want to start a pair yet. I am thinking that I might want to start a pair for myself, though, but I want to get through a couple of these other projects first. So here is the bonbon hat that I am working on. It's got these little lovely nubs of bumps of color that pop up through here. Now this is a paid for pattern, so I'm not gonna give away any of the secret sauce. Though I am a bit tangled up. Let me show you the yarn I'm using. This yarn is really, I, I wasn't sure about it at first because it's a wool cotton blend. Because I'd never worked with it, so it kind of feels a little strange. But this is this yarn is from a verb for keeping warm, which I'd assume is knit, is a verb for keeping warm. This is Dawn. It's naturally dyed fiber and yarn. And this is this is the lighthouse color. It's basically a natural. It's 75% organic merino and 25% organic cotton. So it has this this dishcloth texture to it, but at the same time, it's kind of, it's it's a little rustic, but it's really soft. But what's been interesting as I'm knitting is I haven't worked with things that have what they call veg matter. And veg matter is just anything that gets onto the sheep's wool while it's being, you know, while it's living. Now, I'm sure you can't see it because it's just, but what it is, as it's floating around everywhere, it's little pieces of grass and maybe hay or something so it's just small pieces of something that just it'll just stick to the yarn you see that right there and that's considered veg matter so sometimes you can just pick it out and sometimes it stays as part of the yarn so you see how it's like a piece of dried grass or hay or something so it's been interesting to work with this yarn it's really nice i could see why people say it's great to try different yarns and to knit with different things and then I also have the brown here. Same company, same um, whatever they call their yarn brand or whatnot. But this one is called Seal. And I think it's great because it has these natural blips that aren't really dyed through here. And then it picks up this natural color there. So they work really, really well together. So I'm enjoying that. I still have quite a bit to go before I even think about decreasing. It's a little bit, as you could tell, it's sort of a color work, slip stitch type pattern. So it does take a little bit of time to get through it all the time. And I, I spent this week doing a lot of sewing, as you can see, that knitting didn't pop in as often as it normally does. This hat is one that I kind of need to be awake and pay attention for. But the shawl, when I'm getting a little sleepy, it's okay to knit on that because I know... It's really easy to fix it. It's just knit, knit, knit. There's not going to be any problems. But if I, as you can see, the colors on here are alternating. If I mix, mess this up, I've got to take a whole bunch out and start all over. So this one is for daytime knitting. The shawl is for nighttime knitting. And then I've got the fun stuff. In this lovely bag, I have a snowman. I'm building a snowman. So I've spent a little bit more time working on my snow guy here. So I've got his head and I've got his the collar of his sweater or his cowl, however you want to look at it. I'm working on the birdhouse now. This is a very enjoyable project. I love to pick this up. I wish I could pick it up a little bit more often. I'm trying to just at least get maybe one length of thread. I tend to do about 18 inches of when I pull off my floss. So it's really fun to work on. But what I've been enjoying is this little hoop that also came with this. This is the greatest little thing. I don't know if I've mentioned it or I told you people love it, people hate it. I, I've fallen in love with it. I usually use those big plastic hoops and then you've got to tension it around and you've got to pull it and struggle with it. Then you get it on and then when you're done, you've got to take the hoop off so you don't leave any hoop marks. I was working on this in one of my videos and I had that plastic hoop and you can see the hoop marks. Even though I took it off the hoop every time I was done, you can still see it. But you can't see the hoop marks from this one. This guy, you just pop him underneath 
the little plastic thing it's got a groove in it and you take this and you just set it in there and it automatically pops into the groove and look at that it's nice and tight you can a little not very much not even an eighth of an inch it is just nice and tight and I can just stitch away no problem and then when I'm done I pop it out and look there's really nothing there I, I smooth my hands over it like that and it goes away now granted yes it wasn't in there for very long but you can't see it over here where I've hooped it you can only see the big hoop from the plastic one so if you're looking to try something different for your embroidery you might want to look into one of these I have no idea what it's called it came to me just like this not in a package I think it's called a hold on spring loaded hoop that's what it's called I've heard it called that before on the floss tubes from the cross stitchers yeah I'm gonna find another bigger one than this so that I can make it a little bit bigger but I don't mind really I could just work on this little spot pop it out so easily and then just move over so I might not even need to get anything larger I'm really looking forward to finishing this up and then trying this I guess maybe I would want it a little bit bigger if I was doing an embroidery project like the unicorns but yep so this is really great I am enjoying this project. And that's it for me this week. That is everything I've worked on. I've been dreaming about projects in the head. Plenty of things that <laughs> I've got things going on in my head. Plenty of things that I'd like to go ahead and work on. I've got uh, I've got a long list of things I want to sew and a long list of things I want to embroider and knit. But I'm trying to do just a couple projects at a time so that I'm not overwhelming myself and I can actually enjoy the project I'm working on and get through it. I have a lot of knitting projects that are coming up in the near future so that I'm going to be working on those. But it's just easier to work on one or two projects at a time. So let me know down in the comments what you guys have been working on. If you've enjoyed this video, please think about liking and subscribing. When you subscribe to a YouTube video, it shows YouTube that people are interested in it and then it can suggest my channel to other people, which will bring more new followers into our little group here, our little posse. And then if you want YouTube to notify you of any time I do put up a video, then go ahead and ring that little bell because now that we're into the new year, I'm going to go back to popping up some surprise videos on Sundays. So you never know. It's nice to be notified. All right, guys. Have a great week and I'll talk to you later. Bye.